Well, uh, class, believe it or not, here we are. Last week of the fall semester. Uh, crazy to think we are a couple of weeks away from Christmas, and you are a uh, mere, I guess, four and a half days away from the end of the semester and uh, the end of this class as you know it. So I, I was thinking, uh, just driving, actually, you can notice I've got my Christmas, my Christmas sweatshirt on. I went to a Christmas party earlier, so uh, for those uh, who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, hope you have a great time with friends and family, and you get some rest. I know I'm going to um, hopefully sleep in, and uh, well, I have four kids, so I'm not going to be sleeping in, but hopefully I'm going to be resting, and I hope the same for you. So maybe it's just resting from not having to do schoolwork or what have you. But hope you get some great downtime with friends and family. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was thinking about just how much we have accomplished. And, and I thought about, so what is the definition of success for a class like what we've just gone through? Given that you've covered so much ground, um, you know, and, and, and wondering to myself kind of out loud, what's the... Um, what are markers for success? Now, you know, of course, you can do the idea evaluations. You can talk about the different things that you learned and, and the approach and the instruction. And you could even talk about the books. And in fact, I would ask for all that in feedback. But when you when you look back, you know, whether it's uh, you know Saturday of this this week, you know, maybe you maybe some of you are graduating. I don't, I don't know. I can't remember if you talked about that. But but let's say you look back on Saturday, or maybe you look back, you know, uh, Saturday in about five months. Or maybe when you eventually do graduate and you look back and you go, what did, I, what did I actually accomplish in that class? What did I get at? You know, I don't think the marker of success in a course is necessarily the fact that you memorized everything. In fact, I, I would say I, I know that that's not the marker. Can you regurgitate everything that you gained in this class? No, you can't. Well, I don't think that's actually a bad thing. Um, you know, is a marker of success in the class, did I really enjoy everything I learned? Uh, no, once again, I, that's not a marker of success. Uh, did um, did I have fun? Well, you know, school can be enjoyable, but I don't think that it's necessarily uh, something that you can always say, nor should you have to always say it's fun. I think sometimes you just have to, to, to make it bearable, get through it, and, and complete, right? So there's lots of different ways you could define it. But here's what I would say. In fact, I want to start with um, a question that one of you in class wrote in the, the latest LipTAC 321. And it's this question. Um, it, it says, is it okay for a client who is coming in for career counseling to also discuss other aspects of their life and how they are impacting their inability to choose a career? How would you approach that? I think that's a, that's a fantastic question. And perhaps it's one that you have maybe not in the same exact way uh, asked, but it's one that you've been thinking about as you've gone through this this course. Because now, obviously, in the majority of the well, I would say the the vast majority, given that this is only a one course um, kind of coverage to the career development content, but in the rest, the remainder of the program, you're looking at life in general, right? So you're looking at how do you address specific or maybe uh, implicit concerns that a client brings to you in life as we know it. But here we're looking at careers. The question, can is it okay for a client to talk about career? Well, so if you think back uh, to the very beginning, so if you go back all the way, kind of, you know, rebuy in your mind, go back to, what, 15, 16 weeks ago, and you recall as we introduced this content, one of the things that you did is you read that book, Wellbeing by Tom Rath. And that is a book that is not specifically about career. Now, obviously, there's an element, right? One of the five elements of well-being is career well-being, but it's not the entirety of the book. And so as we explore uh, that together, or we explored, I should say, in past tense, uh, we talked about how uh, career is so vital to all of life. But similarly, you can say, and you should say, that's, that, that all of life is so uh, vital to career. And so you can't really look at them as separate things. So, you know, I was, uh, you know, we've talked about this in the semester so far, but the fact that we spend the majority of our given week, you know, especially Monday through Friday for the majority of us, uh, we spend that time at work. Where if we have friends or family or roommates that we live with, you know, obviously we're, we're at work more than we are at home. So, um, so yeah, they all affect. So, you know, I, I, even today I was going to a lunch party and somebody didn't join us in our lunch, um, lunch in our work lunch because of some personal things that were going on. And that happens all the time. So these things are, they're not separate, right? You can't silo off, you know, your life right over here and then your career. Like they're not, 
they're not two things. You can't separate professional and personal. This is just life. It's who we are. And so as you are working with clients potentially in a career counseling, career development uh, um, um, situation, you know, uh, context, absolutely these things are going to come up. I, I've been coaching clients and, uh, you know, in the midst of talking about uh, their career uh, aspirations and some of the challenges that they're experiencing, they've brought up some very challenging relational aspects, things that really don't have anything to do with work. And yet I would say that they have absolutely everything to do with work because you can't separate out the person from the job and the job from the person. They are, you know, in many ways, one and the same. So I would say, um, please, you know, we may not feel fully equipped. I, you know, I may not have the same training that you have and you may not have the same training that I have, but I think we can still, from a helping profession standpoint, we can be careful in how we navigate these conversations and talking about uh, individuals um, uh, and just life in general and how it applies to careers. So I was actually able to, in I'm thinking of one specific conversation in particular, uh, talk about how this individual uh, was going through some relational challenges and what that did to for me, to me, uh, in our conversations, both past and present, is it proved to me that the ideas that I had considered were the issue at hand that needed to be dealt with were in fact not just, I guess, relegated to only career, but it was to life in general. And so as we unpacked these things together, I was able to say, hey, you know, we talked about this in your career. I think this is really what I'm seeing in life overall. And I, it was a great breakthrough. In fact, so much so that uh, several uh, of our, our client sessions later we're sitting down and, and this individual said, before we talk about career, I want to I just tell you one thing that, you know, you remember a couple weeks back we talked that that situation, um, it's, you know, it's changed and they, they proceeded to tell me how things had changed and how it was a challenging thing, but it was for, it's for the better in their life personally. Um, so, so I would say, you know, and I think it even, if you're know, reading down in the same 3 two, one one of the things that says, uh, or I guess above, it says, interesting that a person's hobbies could tell you more about what a person might enjoy doing and using uh, that as a way to direct them in their career path. So, once again, these hobbies don't necessarily have anything, uh, I would say, uh, specifically to do with career, for the most part anyway, but, but it still applies at, for their, to their job situation and vice versa. So um, if you are someone that is uh, really able to kind of be perceptive and intuitive in these conversations, you can make great connections as you talk about um, other aspects of life in the greater context of career counseling. So great question. And that gets the idea that they're all interwoven, they're all intertwined. And so as you think back and you, you gauge, you judge the success of this class, that's the question I think that I would ask. And I led with that example because I think that we've got to consider Am I now seeing things through this lens? Am I, am I at least considering how career plays a role in the greater context and how the greater context plays a role in career? Um, I think these are so vital. They're so important. And so, uh, you know, I, I get it. M the vast majority, if not all of you, will never go on to do anything specifically in the field um, or practice of career development. And that's perfectly okay. Nothing, nothing's wrong with that at all. Um, but now you know the content. And so you're not going to remember what exactly Savika said. You may not recall exactly what Bluestein's somewhat controversial theories and, and techniques might be. You, you may not even remember what RIASEC stands for, or how it's related to the strong interest inventory, or the role that Holland played in career development way back in the 50s. You may not remember any of these things, but you're going to have this, this framework that you're going to see things through, at least I would hope so. So how do you judge if it was successful? You, you remember that there are a few things that stood out to you, and you keep those things in mind, and you refer back to them. And I think what it does is it helps to prepare you, at least cognitively speaking, to be the exact type, or at least working towards being the exact type of career counselor that somebody is going to need at some point down the road. And I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a betting person, but I am willing to wager... That in the future, as you're working with clients and you're doing traditional clinical psychology, uh, I am willing to uh, place a significant wager. I'm, I mean, I'm talking like 25 cents at this point. You know, if I had more money, I would place more money on the wager. But 
I'm willing to place a wager that at some point down the road, you will be working in a situation with a client or maybe you know, potentially multiple clients. And you will have a conversation, and much like I said way back, um, <clears throat> you, will, you will be able to see how, um, how career is so important. And you'll be able to see how career relates to the this, this specific situation that's being discussed at hand. And, and yet, uh, it's not the actual situation that is the more challenging thing for them, but it's actually their career. And you'll be able to consider and remember the five elements of well-being, maybe even walk your clients through that and ask those questions and, and talk about, you know, how is your career well-being? Is, is it challenging? And because of that, is that dragging down potentially the other elements of well-being in your life? So as you reflect back and you look ahead, my, my hope is, my challenge would be that you will uh, have uh, retained as much information as possible, per, you know, not verbatim, not memorizing everything, but at least being able to reflect on it. Put it into practice. And even if you go back, and you know, you have access to this class for quite some time. If you went back into Sakai at some point, and you just went through the Libtac 321, and even just these application ideas, these, these action items, and you said, I want to do this, or I think I could do this. If you just refer to those, I wonder how much more important and powerful and potent, uh, if you will, your therapy and counseling will be down the line. So I just want to say, I, I guess I would say thank you for this great semester, for your contribution. You know, again, we have four and a half days left. Um, my final words after just being uh, so grateful for the time that you've invested in this class um, is finish strong. Um, I've included a couple things you'll see in Sakai. Under the assignments, you can now upload your final assignments. There's two separate uh, sections. One is for your um, URL for your video. So uh, again, I want a YouTube video to be posted. Um, along with your one to two page handouts. That's in one assignment submission area. And then the other, of course, is your intake questionnaire that you'll be doing in regards to the case of, uh, of, of Leslie. Okay. Also, if you look in the forum section, you will see at the very top there's a forum uh, that says something along the lines of um, synthesis video. You can post your video in there if you'd like others to see it. Um, if you do post it there, please remember that you need to also share the URL uh, in Sakai itself. Okay, and remember, if you're going to make it private, you need to invite me to view it. Um, and my hope and expectation really would be that you at least list it as uh, um, unlisted. You know, you save it as unlisted so that, you know, if you don't want other people to see it, only I and yourselves will see it, unless you, of course, post it to Sakai. Okay, so there's that. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, my last challenge would be, uh, I guess really it's more of an exhortation, encouragement. Uh, proofread your final assignments many, many times, many, 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 many times. Proofread them, uh, and make sure that there's no spelling errors. Pay attention to the underlying words. You know, red, green, purple, blue, whatever the colors are in your Word document that says they're either correctly or incorrectly spelled, or there's incorrect grammar. Pay attention to those things because those are easy fixes. Uh, pay close attention to APA. Okay, so when you're doing your references page, make sure that your references page is properly formatted. Everything. Right? So make sure that your in-text citations are properly formatted. Make sure that your, um, your block quotes, if you're using them, are um, single-spaced and all indented, and the punctuation is before the parentheses at the end of the paragraph and so forth. Um, you, know, you have a handout. Um, there's been uh, plenty of, I think, discussion on APA, and I hope you'll be able to refer back to that. So I wish you the best of luck in the future. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas. Again, so grateful for you. And if I can be of service in any way in the future, please don't hesitate to contact me. If you're meeting with clients and they you know, need a referral to a career counselor or coach, send them my direction. I'd be happy to help and, and work with them as well. I get most of my referrals from actual, um, or most of my clients from referrals, and I'd love to receive more of them. So uh, again, if I can help in any way in these next couple of days, please reach out to me. Um, if not, I look forward to reading your final assignments. I'll have your grades updated as much as they can be as of tonight. And then, of course, once your final assignments uh, roll in, I will get those grades updated very quickly as well. So thanks again for a great semester. Finish strong, and we will see you online this week.